In this episode, we're going to discuss database constraints and how they work with migrations. Typically, Rails developers don't make much use of tight database constraints. Usually, since the model is the gateway to the database, we rarely modify the database directly outside of the model and make model-side validations to keep data integrity. However, some developers have a strong preference for strong data integrity and choose to put an additional layer of constraints on the database aside from just trusting Rails model validations. Most common constraints that people usually want to add are null constraints and or foreign key constraints. To add a not null constraint, we can add it in the database migration, just like so, null, false. Now, notice that we are actually modifying an existing migration. And as I mentioned earlier, this is not considered good practice because if someone else pulls this migration from the repository, they may have already ran the migration, storing it in the schema table, and they may not have gotten your latest change. However, for the purpose of this exercise, I'm just giving an example. Now, on top of that, let's say that we wanted to add a migration for a foreign key to the organization object that we had talked about in the past. If we assume that in the past we had actually generated an organization model, then we can take a look at what sort of migration that that may have added. Here we go, create organizations. I've already done this for you so that we don't have to go through it here. We can actually add now a migration to add the organization IDE to the people table. We can do that by calling up our console and typing Rails generate migration, add organization ID to people. And then I'm just going to call organization references. Now that has generated the migration. Take note that I had used the references keyword here instead of explicitly calling organization underscore ID colon integer in the generator, I make use of this keyword, which Rails understands that I want to inject a foreign key into the resource that's being called. Now let's take a look at that migration. As you can see, it does call an add reference to the organization, indexes it as well as gives a foreign key. This will both add the reference as well as also add a foreign key constraint in the database. Now we can run our migrations to see if that has worked. So I'm going to type rakedb migrate. It's going to migrate my empty database that I've actually emptied previously. And there we see it. A whole bunch of migrations were run. We're going to take a look at the schema RB. And as we take a look at it, we see that the organizations table has been created as well as the people table. An index has been added as well as a foreign key constraint. And there we have it.